All right, guys, here we go. This was requested by Ray Ray Burr. Mr. Nightmare, four disturbing true hitchhiking horror stories. Here we go. Love Mr. Nightmare. Ray Ray Burr, as always, thank you for the support, man. It was a rainy night, and I was driving home from my shift at the late night diner I work at. It was a quiet shift at work. I had a weird amount of energy still, so I knew I was going to have to pop a melatonin when I got home. I was driving my usual route, a scenic road during the day, but majorly dark at night, lacking many light posts. There's the occasional little parking lot with cute little strips of stores or family-owned restaurants and shops, and then just stretches of nothingness. And by nothingness, I mean forest, obviously. I was passing Sounds like the where I live. parking lot <laughs> of a well-known deli, and under a light post was a woman standing out in the rain with her arm held out. She was waving me down. I slowed as I realized it was a slightly older woman who appeared to be in her mid-50s, maybe. This woman was really tall, like 5'11 or... I don't want to sound mean, but if someone's standing out in the rain on the side of the road, I'm not going to, like pull over and be like, hey, get in my car. I'll give you a ride. I'll be like, why the hell are you standing out in the rain and it's dark out? <laughs> Six foot, but very skinny. Too many red flags. I lowered my window and yelled, do you need a ride? She came over to the front door and opened it, chanting how much of a hero I am. I asked where she's heading and she said just up the road to town. She was soaking wet, getting my car all wet, but... I like to think of myself as a good person, and I couldn't in good conscience leave another woman out there in the cold rain. However, picking up a random man, on the other hand, would be a different story. The yeah. woman seemed sweet, but I noticed as I looked at her while talking to her, she was missing a few teeth. Very, very off-putting. I had to now wonder if she were homeless. She well, you don't want to be judgmental, but yeah, it is weird. The skinny, tall lady standing out in the rain, missing teeth. It's like, is she is she homeless? What's going on? It's there. There are some red flags there. Didn't smell or look like a homeless person, though. But the rain soaking her and her clothes could have been masking any sense temporarily. Plus, her hair was so wet that what may have usually been scraggly, undone hair could now have been weighted down and straightened by the water. Either way. The woman was smiling the whole time and didn't seem like a threat. We pulled up to an intersection with a gas station on one corner. I pulled in next to a pump. Might as well fill up. I asked her if she wanted anything from inside. I was really doing my good deed for the week. She said no thanks, yeah, honey. Yeah, that's a good deed. So I went inside Picking to up a random person. <laughs> and some spike seltzers since tomorrow was the weekend. When I got back to my car, the woman was gone. I looked around the gas station lot real quick. Gone. It was tiny. She was gone. She must Yo, do you guys think she's a ghost? Do you guys think she's a ghost or do you think she's just some like crazy homeless lady who's just like ran out of the car? What what do you guys think? Just ran off somewhere. I felt slightly bad feeling like she was some lost helpless woman, but part of me also felt slightly relieved. I filled up the tank of my SUV and I was on my way home. When I got back to the house, I went straight inside my apartment, which is the first level of a two-family house. There's a tenant upstairs and me. The front door into the foyer was usually left unlocked. Then the two doors leading to each apartment were locked. I let myself in, out of the rain, and into my apartment. I set the seltzers down on the counter. I wasn't that tired yet, so I took a melatonin and tried to go to bed. Even with the melatonin, though, I was having a hard time sleeping that night. My mind was kind of going wild. Don't tell me the lady somehow found his freaking house and she's like in the house. That'd be creepy. Wild with thoughts. A lot of thinking Yo. about that woman I picked up earlier and what happened to her. You think she's a ghost, Chelsea? Points, I heard Maybe. I sounds from outside of my bedroom. Oh, but God. But I dismissed them as sounds from the upstairs tenant. It's the freaking Boy, lady. Do I wish I was <laughs> more suspicious before falling asleep. I woke up in my dark bedroom. Something that usually would never happen when I take a melatonin. I usually sleep like a baby through the night. I sat up feeling drowsy, feeling really thirsty too. I reached over the table next to my bed for my water. And then I saw and heard something across the room from me. I no. saw someone crouched in the corner of my bedroom behind a clothing dresser with their legs full. Oh hell, oh hell no. I had to be hallucinating oh. it. 
I shook my head violently and made weird noises. I even slapped myself in the face. I think it's and a ghost. Whoever was in the corner stood up and walked out of the room. I think she's a freaking ghost. Scream. I didn't say a word. I sat in my bed in literal shock. The part that had me questioning my sanity for a bit after the figure was gone was that there wasn't a single sound from outside the room after this. No footsteps, not the sound of a door closing. Oh, gosh. I grabbed <sighs> my phone and called my dad. He picked up, confused why I was calling so late. I told him of what I just saw, and he said, Trish, you probably just had a night terror. I stayed on the phone with him as I was continuing to become more awake, and I left my room and turned on the lights to the living room outside. It was a small space. There was no one in there. It has to I be a freaking the ghost. Space and could confirm no one was there. How would the lady know where I they live? I started to believe that maybe I did just it has to be a ghost. It, but still, I slept with the bedroom door locked that night. When I woke up in the morning, I drank some coffee and got dressed for the gym. I went to open the door to the foyer and realized it was already unlocked. My heart sank. Last night, yo, I saw, was it real? I did another look it around had the apartment, been a ghost. confirming no one was inside. I went out to my car and opened the back door to put my gym bag in the back seat. And that's when I noticed the damp, yellow, brownish stains all over the floor in the back. And my blanket that I always had back there was gone. Maybe it wasn't a ghost. I don't know. I figured it out. That woman snuck into the back seat last night when I was in the gas station. She either somehow unlocked the door to my apartment or I mistakenly left it unlocked. I called my dad again. That explains it. I'm like, if the if they were if they were at the gas station and the crazy lady like, well, they thought that she ran away, but she was hiding in the back seat. So it's not a ghost. It's just some crazy lady. Frantically asking him what to do. That said, makes sense make now. Sure nothing was Yo. stolen, and if nothing was, then calling the police really wouldn't do anything. I checked the house and didn't find anything to be missing just my blanket from the car. I skipped the gym that day. In fact, I stayed bottled up in my apartment for a while after that. I was just genuinely disturbed. I didn't want to live there for much longer after that. And so after that month, I found a new place to live. I hate to say I'd probably move to. <laughs> I'd probably move to a new apartment or house if I had the money. <laughs> Crazy this guys. This happened a few months ago. And I don't know why I agreed, but I decided to go with my friend Michael to a house party he was right attending underground. during our first <laughs> year of high school. Even though I wasn't even invited, Michael was able to pull some strings and I accepted the invitation. Knowing that I wouldn't be able to drive, I made the choice to go with Michael. When we arrived at the home late at night, Michael told me to leave my phone in the car. He explained that maybe I could lose it or someone I don't know could try and take it from me while I'm not looking. At first, I was confused. I simply nodded and we got out of the car. I went with Michael into the home or backyard where the party was taking place. I glanced around the backyard and saw people engaging in various activities such as smoking, drinking, and possibly even doing drugs in small groups. Oh God. <laughs> Michael had encouraged me to go mingle and say hello to a few people. After a few hours, I realized I had way too much to drink because my vision was completely foggy. After getting closer to the house, I leaned against the wall to support myself. As I did so, I noticed the time on my watch indicated that it was either midnight or one in the morning. Jeez. I knew it was time to leave, so I set it's out to find Michael. It's 1.06 in the morning now. Despite my overwhelming <laughs> need to collapse, I scanned the yard for him, but I was unable to locate him or see him. When I asked a few others if they'd seen Michael, they all said they had not. I decided to call Mike to find out where he was, so I reached inside my pocket to feel for my phone, but it wasn't there. And I cursed myself in the back of my mind because I realized that I had left my phone in Michael's car. It disappeared with him. Oh no, you lost your phone, man. That sucks. I realized there was only one way to get home, which was walking, because I remembered my house wasn't too far from this house, but the night was chilly because it was fall. I thought about just asking someone else to take me home, but I didn't know anyone else that could help. So I stuck with my idea of walking home in the darkness by myself. It's all good, and Isaiah. I got to the road <sighs> and started stumbling down the street. And I knew I had too many drinks because I felt lightheaded and dizzy. A few minutes later, I made it to the main area of the street and kept walking. I lazily started thinking about a bunch of different things, like why did Michael decide to leave me alone at the party? Or why I decided to listen to Michael's idiotic idea of leaving my phone in his car so I couldn't call him or anyone else? 
I started cursing myself for being so careless with my drinking and even getting drunk, knowing I shouldn't have done that. I stopped walking on the side of the road because I was getting tired, and I crossed my arms over my chest tightly to keep myself warm. Then I remembered something I could do, which was hitchhiking, and I then held out my arm and stuck out my thumb. Bro, hitchhiking is a me. bad idea, bro. Come the on. Cars drove past me. They wouldn't stop. And as Don't hitchhike. I started feeling uneasy, thinking I would have to start walking again. It was past one in the morning, and there were a few cars driving past me, but no one was stopping because they either didn't notice me or didn't care. I hesitated. I thought about walking home again, but I realized that in my drunken state, it would be too daunting. I was still holding out my thumb when a gray truck pulled up and stopped in front of me, and I smiled as I stumbled towards the vehicle. The window rolled down, and an older-looking man with a beard asked me oh, if I needed God. a ride. I told him yes, and then told him where my house was before getting into the truck, feeling grateful for the ride. As we started driving down the road, the man started trying to make small talk with me, asking what happened to me. However, I was too disoriented to have an actual conversation with him and the only things I could manage to say were low mumbles or just murmurs and groans. As we turned the corner to my street away from the party, I started feeling uneasy. For some reason, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was strange about this man. Suddenly, we drove past my- Yeah, it's a bad combination. You're drunk, you drank too much, and some random guy picked you up and you're hitchhiking. This is a very bad combination of things. ...house, and I told the man that we had just driven past it, and I felt my gut telling me to get out, but I couldn't because I was too drunk to move. Okay, Ryan. I was about to tell the awesome, man to bro. let me out before we got too far away from my house. Whatever you want, and bro. Suddenly, the man turned to me, and I noticed he had a sinister look on his face. You know, you shouldn't yeah. be drunk while you're hitchhiking. I'd rather walk target, than hitchhike said, underground. I'd rather light. just walk home. The man reached <laughs> over and started rubbing my leg, and I didn't know what he was trying to do. Oh but I knew no! It probably wasn't anything good. God. But before he could do anything else to me, we both heard a loud siren behind the car, and then a flashing red and blue light flooded the night. I realized it was the police, and I jumped for joy inside. The man panicked and stopped, unlocking the doors, which allowed me to jump out of the car. I ran as fast as I. This cop probably just saved this guy's life, honestly. I could, and the police officer rushed over to me, and I told him the entire story about what happened to me. Unfortunately, nothing illegal happened per se at that point. Uh, the yeah. police officer told me that he was looking for someone in a gray truck who had apparently stolen something from a store. I'm not sure if it was the man who picked me up or someone else, but I was just glad the police officer stopped the car. A cop gave me a ride home, and I decided from there on I wouldn't get so drunk that I couldn't think straight. I now know the importance of being responsible yeah. and staying aware of my Thank surroundings. Thank God for that even cop. Even having a good time. Oh my gosh. That cop probably saved his life. I'm not even joking. <laughs> or stopped something very bad from happening. I was still in college when this happened. I went to a big party school in upstate New York. I wasn't in a sorority, but I attended a lot of the frat parties still. I had a heavy drinking phase in college, unfortunately. But I guess it's good that I got it out of my system. There was an upcoming frat party that my friends Deanna and Kayla wanted to go to. I was not one to ever say no to a party unless I was already deathly hungover. And even then, I'd sometimes be- Am I the only- Am I the only boring person in like high school? I didn't really go to college, to be honest. I didn't have the whole college party life, but- Am I the only weird, boring person who really didn't go to like- parties in high school or go like hang out with a bunch of people at parties and stuff. I never did that in high school. Like I said, I didn't really go to college, so I didn't have a chance to go to college parties, but I'm kind of antisocial. <laughs> like I have a few friends that I like and, you know, you guys, um, here on Twitch and uh, YouTube and stuff, but like, I'm not a big guy to like go to parties and stuff. Be known to still go out. I was living in a house off campus with three other girls. We were not a sorority house or a team house or anything like that. Just four friends renting a house together. I believe it was a Kappa Sigma party that we were going to. Right underground? <laughs> the house was about 20 minutes away from campus. We pre-gamed pretty heavily at our house. And then we called an Uber, which we all split. On the Uber ride there, we pre-gamed yeah, some more, <laughs> which was a recipe for disaster. By the time we showed up to the party, I was borderline blacked out. I just barely remember the layout of that house. 
I'd never been to a Kappa party besides that night. Yeah, I sound like a really boring person, but I never, I never drank alcohol in high school. I never did, you know, anything illegal in high school. I was just kind of a boring person. I played basketball. I like sports, but I still don't drink. You know, I mean, as an adult, I've drank alcohol a few times, but I'm just not, I'm not a big drinker, big partier. I just like doing, uh, YouTube and Twitch and stuff. <laughs> I'm kind of boring. It's weird. I have short spans of memory from that night. I vaguely remember the outside, that there were a bunch of frat guys standing out front of the house. And then I remember the DJ in the living room and the two beer pong tables in the kitchen. Really, Ray? <laughs> I was later told that I played beer pong with some random frat guy and ended up talking to him in a corner for a big chunk of the night. But after that, nobody knows where I went. I couldn't even tell you the last thing I remember before oh, waking no. up sleeping on the grass on the side of the road in a daze. My head was throbbing. I had to still be somewhat intoxicated. It was pitch black outside. Or she was Bill Cosby, if you know what I mean, by whatever guy she was with. God, that's terrible. I was laying by a bunch of trees, like Gosh. a wooded area. Apart from the university, there wasn't much up there besides woods and the occasional little town. Yeah, underground, right? There were a couple light posts further down the road, so I wasn't just laying in complete darkness. I patted down my pockets looking for my phone, and I had a meltdown when I realized my pockets were empty. I was also missing my crossbody bag. Oh, gosh. I had absolutely nothing on me. I started to freak out. I couldn't even call for help, let alone check the time or where I was. I looked around the immediate area by where I was sleeping. Nothing. My white shirt was stained with dirt, but that was the least of my worries. I started walking down the road closer to the light posts. I was starting to realize there were no buildings in sight. I was on some completely oh random Oh my gosh! Road. I leaned on the light pole for where a few is she? Minutes, wondering what to do. I decided I'd wait for someone to pass by and ask for help. It took a long time though, at least 15 minutes, before I noticed headlights down the road. Oh no, this girl's been through enough. She wakes up in a ditch on the side of a road, like out in the country, and now she has to hitchhike, and it's probably going to be some freaking weirdo who picks her up. This poor girl. Give her a break. Stepped out onto the road, waving my arms and jumping, trying to ensure I got their attention. The car slowed to a stop on the side of the road. I approached the car, and the guy inside rolled down the window. Once he asked me if I was all right, I told him I was stranded without a phone and needed a ride home. It's going to be some to creep. In, and I did. Oh, God. I'm sure to let him know how much I appreciated it. He, of course, asked me about my predicament, how I found myself stranded on the side of the road. I told him I was at a party, and the next thing I remembered was waking up on the side of the road. In hindsight, I should not have said any of that. I should have She's been in the vague back rooms. Not let this guy <laughs> know that I got completely <laughs> trashed and was vulnerable. He asked why I didn't call for help, and I told him I lost my cell phone too. The guy looked at me like I was a moron. I looked back at him for a second, and this was the first time I really analyzed his features. He was like 35. He wasn't the best looking guy. He had a thin goatee and a big nose. <laughs> I gave him my address to put oh, into no. his house. Oh no, not the big nose, As he drove, oh gosh. He put the address in, and then I heard him say under his breath, Oh really, underground? <laughs> I asked how far away we were, and he said about 20 minutes. That sounded about right, since the frat house was about 20 minutes from our house. I thought things would go smoothly. I'd get dropped off at the house where Kayla and Deanna would be waiting for me with my belongings. But nothing can ever go that smoothly. The man spoke in a gentle voice basically the entire time. He was asking basic questions at first. His soft voice was almost, in a weird way, off-putting. He's a creep. Why was he talking in an almost whisper in the car? We drove on and on for what seemed like over 20 minutes on the same road. I started to get concerned, and so I asked him how much further we had. He didn't respond right away, so I said, Sir, and he went, hmm? And I repeated my question. He said in his soft voice, not far. This wasn't right. Not far. Our house is oh, in town. Oh, no. Yet we were still on the same back road with nothing but trees everywhere. I started noticing in my peripheral vision that he would look at me multiple times. Like he'd move his whole head to stare at me for a few seconds and then look back at the road. <laughs> I was starting to feel sick. I asked him if he put the right address in, and he said yes. Then he said, what color underwear are you wearing? 
as he put his Bro. hand on my knee and started rubbing my knee. Oh no. I moved it away and told him in a desperate voice to please not hurt me. I just want to get home safe. He said, why would I hurt you? Oh, bro, After come this, on. Just take her home, bro. The the road and put the car in park. Metal Ryan, lean over have a great night, buddy. Like Thank you for all the support. Me, but I didn't let him. I opened the door and ran into the woods. Luckily, I was wearing my Air Force One, so I didn't have a Yo. hard time running in the woods. I ran only just enough to be out of sight from the car when I could no longer see its headlights. I heard the man for the first time raising his voice, and he yelled into the woods, where are you at? I just want to lick your pussy. I put my hands over my mouth, what? not only to muffle my breathing, but because of pure fear. I waited and waited until I heard a car door slam shut. and the Mr. Nightmare, he kind of... <sighs> he muted out the words, but I kind of heard what he said. Oh my gosh. Sound of a car speeding off. I waited a few more moments before walking back to the road, confirming he was gone. I felt truly helpless. I didn't want to run into that man again, but I also needed someone else to help me. I waited just at the edge of the woods for another car to come. You freaking nasty, bro. Did. I saw the headlights approaching from afar, but I waited until I was sure that it was a different car before jumping out and waving my arms and yelling. The car came to a stop. It was another man, this guy a little older. I sat in the back seat this time. I was so shaken up that I hardly spoke apart from answering whatever questions about my predicament he asked. Let's hope this is a Thankfully, de this man dropped me decent off man. It was like a normal person. My friends were still awake waiting for me. They had my phone and my bag. They were contemplating calling the police if I didn't come back by morning. No one had any clue who I left with or how I ended up on the side of the road. The boy Damn, who I was bro. with claimed he wasn't the one to leave with me. In fact, there's no solid proof that I even left with anyone, but that leaves no explanation how I ended up sleeping on the side. Another reason to why you shouldn't get blackout drunk because things happen and you don't remember. I don't drink at all, so this isn't a this is not a problem I personally have, but I know a lot of people party, a lot of people like to drink. Just don't drink too much. My god. Side of the road. I cut back heavily on the drinking after this night, and I never want to be in a situation again where I have to hitchhike. Underground. <laughs> That's a funny emote. <laughs> yeah, the more subs I get, the more uh, emotes or emojis I'll add on Twitch. Out of the dark forest, I was hitchhiking from Leipzig, Germany to Paris. He was a French man, a somewhat dirty and unshaven driver, small and shabby. He agreed to give me a ride in his car. A ride with him to Paris, where I needed to pick up my paintings from an exhibition I had there. It was October. I Guys, I don't want to sound rude. I know there's people who don't have vehicles. They have to hitchhike to get places. But, I like, why? Why? There's so many weird people out there. Like, you don't know who's going to pick you up. Hitchhiking is so dangerous. Like, just don't do it. Ask a family member, ask a friend. If you need to go somewhere, have a friend drive you somewhere. Don't be standing on the side of the freaking road with your thumb out. Oh, I need a ride. Oh, any random kidnapper or freaking serial killer could pick me up. Oh, I need a ride. Freaking idiots. He was 29 years old and he seemed about the same age. He spoke yeah, broken Uber. English. Uber I spoke no too. French at all. I really didn't have a clue who <laughs> Underground. this guy was. The day was mild, sunny, and blue. It was a warm and comfortable French day, a great day to hitchhike. It was around 4.30 p.m. when I met him at a gas station somewhere in France. I hopped into his little old car, yes. happy Sorry. to have scored a ride. I have random yesh outburst. drove off to Paris <laughs> on the main <laughs> highway. After some small talk, mainly about where I'm from, he reached over my lap and opened the glove compartment. He pulled out what looked like a bunch of passports. They were passports. He handed me all four. The first pretty girl was his girlfriend who died falling off the back of his motorcycle, he said. Well, that's what the he second, said. It's probably a freaking killer. Car crash, he told me. The third girlfriend died from a brain tumor, and the fourth fell off of a horse. He Wait, hold up. Either this man is a liar, or he's a serial killer. He's had four girlfriends who've died? Red flag. He's had four girlfriends who've died. What the hell? He said, I'm such an unlucky man. I agree. Red flag. He was unlucky. <laughs> he 
the uneasiness started then. Unlucky or you're a freaking serial on. killer, bro. He was in possession of four young women's passports. Soon after showing me the passports, the man said he wanted to take a shortcut to Paris. It wasn't really a question to me. Excellent, I thought. Get me out of here ASAP. I assumed we would cut through some charming French villages on secondary roads, past houses and farms. But no. Instead, we turned off onto an implausible dirt road off the main highway. Oh, uh, no. I thought. Oh, not God. Good. Not and good. Silent. Is correct. Why we keep quiet <laughs> is a mystery, perhaps because of our dumb manners. At first, the road was out in the open, through a field. We rolled over the typically vivid green French hillside until we finally reached the oncoming heavy woods. The road narrowed. It grew instantly darker as we entered the forest road and drove in. The interior of the forest was creepy. The woods looked like the perfect place to hide something. I still found the woods beautiful. Beautiful and dreadful. Definitely sounds strange point, underground, I agree. In broken English. Very I strange. Speak English anymore. <laughs> this was definitely not a request. Then silence. Uncomfortable silence in the darkening forest. I started to feel a small trickle of adrenaline in my body. My fight run. or flight instinct was warming up. Run, run, run. The had now officially <laughs> ended. Just silence. I pondered this because I knew I would surely have questions as we would get deeper and deeper into the thickening woods. I knew, though, that I wouldn't ask anything. You Nothing. need to run into the woods. And the sun <sighs> was fading fast. Run fast. The woods grew darker. The driver seemed so tense, and I could tell he was in deep thought. I noticed his lips moving almost imperceptibly. It was rigid, snake-like. I myself <laughs> had moved my hand to the car door handle. A movement I'm sure could not have been missed. We both make a the good detective, down, David. Yeah, right underground. Was I going to die now? Listening to these stories, I see too many red flags undergrounds like him and I would make good detectives. <laughs> hey, that'd be a fun job underground. You, you down, bro? I'll go to college, uh, become a detective. We can uh, solve some crime cases together underground. <laughs> Did he have a gun? I looked. All these questions ran through my head. My life was now surreal. Ash. This was not my plan. Maybe I communicated with my captor in some secret way. Maybe I gave off some kind of male pheromones perceptible only to men facing off. I possessed my own rage issues, and I was not going down without a fight. That I knew. There would be no begging or cries of mercy from me. Not to this fucker. Uh. I also had my own secret storeroom of crazy. <laughs> I was big and strong at that time. Road tough through my travels, and there's no substitute for my nothing-to-lose stare. That is all I gave him. Something very primitive transpired between us then, I think. Rather quickly, in a matter of seconds. It's a sort of inner calculus as to whether one can overcome, stop, or kill the other guy or not. In all its peripheral considerations. Not the least blood, gore, strength, and alas, dying. I don't think these calculations are the same when the victim is small and scared, begging and weak. Yeah, right. Like between <laughs> those two uneven people, it just becomes bloodlust, power, panic, scratching, and doom. Ray Ray Burr says, I wanted to be a forest ranger till I found out I had to do two years of college. <laughs> 5, 12 p.m. The car was now moving really, I didn't really, know you really had to go slow. to college to be a forest a ranger, to be honest. a new place <laughs> in myself. I was transformed with very Let's go underground. Let's go. Transformed into a potential killer myself. <laughs> the Yesh detectives. Maybe my chauffeur could read my mind or my body language or sense my intent or see my hand on his dirty door handle. It was the moment of truth. And then we suddenly started to speed up. Thank God, out of those woods. Odd how these memories have come back to me as I write this. Some memories I'm not certain of, like... Did he say he had to hit one girlfriend with a shovel because she attacked him and would not be quiet and leave him in peace? Did he really explain the two backpacks on the back seat? Oh, Did I, I see, Ray. On purpose? <laughs> Did I later imagine those words? Did I see more passports in his glove box than the four he pulled out? Why didn't I say stop the car after the passport show? The road began to widen and we emerged out of the dark forest into the setting sun, dark red and orange in the sky. I could hear and then see the highway now. I saw tiny houses across the highway. I had no idea where exactly I was. The Frenchman asked me if I wanted to spend the night at his house. Hell no. We could eat dinner together. <laughs> A quick film of his filthy torture chamber basement ran through my head. <laughs> torture chamber no. basement? My first words spoken oh since the God. order not to speak English. I sincerely think that had I broken that command and blabbered something in the woods, 
my story might have had a different ending. It all came down to silence. I can be silent. Damn. Sometimes one needs to be, to contemplate the next move. Maybe one of the faces in the passports may not have been able to spring over her nature and started to talk or beg with fear. Would that have fed the killer's darkness, his evil? Who really knows? I got out at the side of the highway, and with night settling in, I watched him drive away. I never went to the police because I didn't speak French, and I thought maybe my imagination was just too damn active. That French guy was definitely sky, a freaking serial killer. 100%. It was fully dark now. I was now exhausted after that little adventure, and I soon fell asleep on the side of the highway. The next morning, I was worried what the new day would bring. I looked at my hands. Am I still alive? Jump ahead 20 years, and I'm teaching a German business student English in a cafe on a boulevard in Leipzig, Germany. For whatever reason, we discuss this topic, hitchhiking, and I tell him my story. My student promptly whips out his smartphone and Googles French serial killers. Then he shows me pictures. Yo! There he was. Oh my, I, I called it, guys. Patrice Allegre. I he called it. All those years ago. 20 years later. Line. Yo! I never forgotten his face. I called it, guys. At that time, 1990, there was a reported serial killer leaving bodies of girls on the French roadsides and highways. He was in the midst of his killing hobby back then. I had heard That's about That's crazy. Killer. Yo! My French girlfriend told me to be careful hitchhiking back then. I've often wondered if the murdered women and other men may have been buried in those woods we passed through slowly. I now wish I had gone to the police, and have since subsequently tried. He's in jail, and they're not interested. Maybe I could have helped stop more murders back then. That's heavy on my soul, and since then, I felt the dark light in my body. Maybe the souls of the girls escaped with me, desperate to get out of the forest. Wow. I called it, guys. I'm like, yo, he's 100% a serial killer. Four disturbing true hitchhiking horror stories by Mr. Nightmare. Scary, scary, scary.